Hey everybody, I am Emily Leach. National Freelance Business Week is here for 2022, or it's here pretty close. Uh, if you don't know, there's a national holiday for freelance business owners. It is the third week of April every year. So this year, that would be April 18th through the 22nd. And I am super excited. Let me go ahead and bring him on board to sit and chat with John Hornsby out of Asheville. And you guys have like a, a little, you know, two or three towns that are kind of together. We all kind of know Asheville. You hear about it because it's uh, ridiculously beautiful. Uh, <laughs> but what are the other towns and how does that kind of connect together? Uh, yeah, sure. So the, the region is uh, Western North Carolina or WNC. And um, uh, Asheville is sort of the, the biggest uh, city in the region. Um, though, you know, by standards of, some of the other cities uh, that are having events, it's, it's a small city. Um, and we uh, also have a neighboring city called Waynesville, which is the next okay. largest town uh, down the way. And um, we are doing some programming at both locations. Awesome. Yeah, that's what I saw on your stuff. It's Waynesville. I could not for the life of me remember the name. And I was like, oh, okay, I want to understand what, what's happening there. And I know there's a lot of places in the country. You know, you have Raleigh, Durham. They have Chapel Hill right there. So they have their whole four, you know, three cities that kind of come together. They're not doing something yet, but um, I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I have a really, really good friend in town right now that he lives out right outside of Chapel Hill. And they're in the process of talking about moving to Asheville. I said, well, if you do it, I know somebody I can introduce huh? you. Have I have a, a friend just waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> he is super awesome. So how did you get into freelancing? I mean, actually, I kind of know, but I love everybody's story. So do you mind sharing your story of how you became a uh, freelance business owner? Sure. Um, you know, I've really kind of been in and out of it, you know, throughout most of my career, really. I mean, I've always had some sort of side hustle thing going on, yeah. you know, so it, it, not necessarily uh, full-time freelance, but whether it's been, you know, playing in bands or I had a performance venue at one point um, and I, I'm a designer. Uh, I also make art and illustration. And so I've always kind of dabbled in having these other things going on. And I've kind of gone through a cycle a couple of times now where, um, you know, I've been working for someone else, you know, working for a company yeah, and over time kind of become increasingly dissatisfied with, <laughs> <laughs> for one reason or another, um, with with what was happening there, even even when I had it pretty good, um, and so then I go out on my own, and um, and then some opportunity would come up that you know sort of draw me back into you know working with someone else. It's, I've gone through that you know a few times over the years, um, and then you know a couple of years ago, you know the world shut down. And I had sort of been on that cycle again of I had gone back into working uh, for someone else and sort of found myself in a situation that was kind of increasingly dissatisfying. Um, nice word. And, and then COVID hit and yeah. I was let go, um, which was, you know, blessing in disguise. And um, I, I just sort of realized that I had been kind of compromising my values and my purpose in exchange for the illusion of security. Um, wow. And I kind of decided I didn't really want to keep doing that cycle. Now, I mean, who knows what might happen in the future, but that's, <laughs> that's how I feel about it right now. <laughs> so um, I can relate to that. That's kind of where I'm at. So you do graphic design. One of the things that I love that happened for you was your ability to uh, navigate, pivot, expand, look at what was happening in the world because it's happening regardless. And so during talking about the pandemic and you spun off another company, Connection Kits. Did I have that right? That is right. Yeah. yeah. And you saw that, you know, there was this this big gap, you know, the, the conference world went virtual. You know, that's nothing new. Everyone knows that. And one of the things that you you love, if you will, about going to a conference is getting your bag of goodies and, you know, swag, you know, all the things that are in it. Sometimes they're amazing. And you spun off a company that said, okay, just because you're virtual doesn't mean 
that we can't still have that piece of the experience. In fact, if anything, we need it more than ever. So you want to talk about that real quick? Cause that's about as good as I can. <laughs> I love it, but you can definitely talk it better than I can talk it. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. You might hear my dogs barking in the background that's here, okay. but um, the, uh, yeah. So basically we, um, yeah, I was spending a lot of time uh, in different communities that events are a part of. Um, uh, I'm on the board of an organization called AIGA Asheville, right. which is a professional association for design. And a lot of what we do is events, programming of different kinds, um, as well as uh, uh, another community called Creative Mornings, which is sort of like a creative t monthly speaker series. So um, cool. And um, and my background's in events. Um, I started out professionally working at special events and working in the art department and um, it, events have always been sort of part of my life and I follow um, you around. Huh? <laughs> yeah, so when, <laughs> when everything kind of shut down and, you know, I was soul searching like everyone else, like, what am I doing with my life? Yeah. What's really important, um, sort of kept coming back to, you know, this community piece and, um, with things going virtual, how to help, um, facilitate connections and sort of, uh, you know, at first it was like, uh, sort of almost kind of exciting and fun, like everything was virtual. And then it kind of got like, oh, another thing is virtual, <laughs> you know? Um, and so it was a nice way to keep, try and help keep virtual events engaging, help um, keep things uh, connected and sort of bring some analog tactile touch into the digital experience. Mm -hmm. um, so we really started working with conferences and communities that were doing virtual events to help kind of curate um, activities in a box, um, combining swag and um, connecting activities and sending them out to people's homes in conjunction with the events and um, really kind of took off and it was a big part of our business uh, for the past couple of years and still is. I mean, virtual events, as you know, you see here are not going anywhere. Um, you know, right. it, it, it's great to have things opening back up. Love that. 100%. Um, and we're doing stuff with in-person events now too. Um, and virtual events are still going strong and they're not going to go away because people can access stuff from anywhere. Um, if you're using events to, you know, turn a dollar, it can be a more profitable way than in-person because it's way less overhead and you right. have a wide audience you can reach. So, And your audience now knows how to use the technology. <laughs> <laughs> right. Most of them are kind of past that barrier now. Right. That, that was a huge barrier, you know, that actually has been kind of nice that it's lower um, because like you said, you can actually get more people together and, and you don't have half of the group going, where, where do I, how do I, you know, because we just didn't use it enough. Even, I mean, you know me, I, I, I love technology and stuff and I would definitely be that person on zoom where it's like, where, where do you do that at? I don't right. know. <laughs> And because I just didn't use it enough. You use it, what, once a month on a good day, you know, before the pandemic and or on a good month. And now I use it, I don't, I I don't even know how many times a day, but it's kind of our go-to. Oh, I need to talk to somebody. So I just, you know, give them a call on Teams or something like that. Yep. So talk to me a little bit about what is the freelance culture, maybe is the right word, like in your area? You know, is it strong? Is it kind of hopping along? What's it like out there? Yeah, I would say in in general, um, it's a pretty collaborative and and sort of supportive community. Um, there's a lot of um, you know competition is like always a thing, but I think yeah. that in our community, the, the the collaboration is way stronger than any sort of you know fear based kind of um, or you know any sort of like back stabbing any of those kind of things that sometimes come up, you know, um, but it's, it's a really great community. There's a lot of creatives. It's a very, um, Asheville draws, you know, a lot of creatives, um, are a lot of craftspeople, a lot of artists, a lot of, um, digital, you know, marketing design sort of, you know, uh, developers and that kind of thing. Um, and we also have a you know big sort of outdoor economy because we're in the, you know, near the Smoky Mountains and the Blue Ridge Mountains and all that. Oh, and so yeah. um, it, it draws a certain type of person that likes to, um, 
you know, play hooky for Mark sometimes and <laughs> go, get, go get in the woods. Um, and so it's a good, it's a good community, you know, from, from a lifestyle standpoint that way. Mm -hmm. um, and there's definitely, it is also, you know, it's not the cheapest place in the country to live in terms of cost of living. Um, and so it's a tourist economy. Gotcha. And so, um, you know, people who have the ability to sort of work remotely, um, have clients, you know, sort of not only locally, but also, you know, elsewhere um, makes it a little more tenable. So I think it, it sort of draws those kind of people as well. Awesome. Yeah, I, I know in Austin, we have a lot of the same, same kind of vibe. And so I can, I can get that. I'm sitting here thinking, how come I don't live out there? Cause you just described my life. <laughs> yeah. Similar, you know, people, sometimes some of us try and steal the, you know, keep Asheville weird, which is an oh, Austin, Austin phrase, you know, keep Austin weird. But so there's that vibe, that kind of funky. Yeah. Phase. Yeah. And I can say, I, I would have to say that I don't know if they they're still trying to keep Austin weird, but I think we're losing the battle. So Asheville <laughs> might be able to just pick that up and run with it. I don't, I don't know. It's I think people that come into the city still feel like it's weird because it's still very different than most cities. But those of us that are here and have been here for quite a while, even we we, we really feel the difference. So yeah. Anyway, I go down a rabbit I, hole. Yeah, <laughs> there's similar dynamics here too. I think you know, yeah. as, as more people come, it's sort of dilutes the thing that brought the people you know in some ways. <laughs> know, and they're like going this isn't what i moved here for i was like going where you're the reason we what <laughs> oh well so um how do you see it growing there i mean do you see more freelancers probably being attracted to that area like you said because it has so much stuff to go and play and do and i find those to be cities that freelancers tend to be really attracted to do you see a pretty pretty big growth in that community there or yeah that's a that's a, a interesting question I, it the past couple of years have sort of you know really uh, yeah. kind of shaken up the the game board so to speak you know um so it's it's kind of hard to predict but i think that um what's happened with covid and everything has definitely accelerated a shift that um, of people rethinking what they want work to look like, what yep. they want their work-life balance to be, you know. And so I think we'll probably continue to see, you know, that independent worker, consultant, creative coaches, all those types of freelancers continue to grow. Um, I imagine at some point that will also level off, but I couldn't predict, you know, what that would be. I know. Um, but I think, um, you know, we're, we're working to support, support the community with, with this kind of programming um, to try and help um, everyone thrive and, and collaborate more together. So I think things are continuing to move in an upward trend uh, in that regard. And we'll just have to kind of see where it goes from there. It could be a little tough to identify, you know, we have so many more people that are just staying at home working and there it doesn't necessarily mean that they are a freelance business owner. You know, we right. have so much more room at work so that I could see how, that, how that's going to make the waters a little muddy for trying to track the actual growth, you know, of freelancers. So now we have, you know, tax classification and stuff like that, but sometimes it's just based on what we see happening in our city and it, it could look a little skewed, I, th I think. Yeah, and I think, you know, like anything, I think we've, we've definitely seen an uptick in, you know, across the country of people right. transitioning to more of a freelance independent um, option. And like anything, not everyone's going to be successful, you know, so there'll be a surge in that. And then some of them will go back into the workforce. Um, and, you know, what those numbers will be. I couldn't, you know, try and predict. But. <laughs> oh, come on, give us your numbers. <laughs> well, let's talk real quick about the programming you guys have going on out in Asheville. You want to tell us what's happening during the week? Sure. Um, we actually have a lot going on. It's sort of turned into more than I was thinking. <laughs> I at saw first. that grow a little bit. <laughs> it's, it's a yeah. It's it's turned into a thing. Um, 
so we've got we sort of you know you all sort of um, started with this uh, Tech Tuesday um, thing, and so it kind of like took that idea and made like a theme for each day. So we have uh, Motivation Monday, and we've got some Ooh, like some ribbon cuttings happening. We have a ribbon cutting happening in Waynesville in the morning, and a ribbon cutting happening in Asheville uh, in the early evening. We've actually got the mayor coming, doing an official proclamation. Oh, so, yeah. Talked about that. Um, and um, and then we've sort of partnered on the Asheville side, mostly with area co-working spaces. Mm -hmm. So we have um, a handful of different co-working spaces where we're doing uh, things. So there's a place called Focal Point. We're sort of having the kickoff on on Monday, um, on on. Tuesday for Tech Tuesday, um, we're split between two um, uh, co-working spaces. There's some stuff going on at a place called Hatch Innovation Lab, uh, and then there's some stuff in the evening going on at a place called West Space Co-working. Hmm, okay. Uh, Wednesday, we're doing like a Wellness Wednesday theme. So okay. we've we've got um, uh, programming around um, you know uh, work life balance. Uh, things like how to have healthy boundaries with clients, um, taking care of your yourself and your body and getting outside. So some of that will be outside at the Botanical Gardens. Some of that oh, will be beautiful. at uh, Asheville Yoga Center. Um, and then Thursday, we're doing focusing on stuff that helps you thrive. So that's a lot of mm. stuff around like marketing and messaging and branding and design. Um and that's taking place uh, at a place called the Mojo Social Hall, which is a little event space below Mojo Coworking. Um, and then Friday is um, we are doing some stuff at the Asheville Chamber. Uh, we're doing fun and failure uh, is kind of this, what we're leaning into for Friday. Uh, so we have a couple failure Friday panels, uh, one in Asheville and one in Waynesville. Um, throughout the week, there's some stuff going on in Waynesville as well. And that's mostly at the small business center out of okay. the Haywood community college. Um, and then Friday evening, sort of end of week after party at a place called Franny's farm, um, which is a, 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 a cannabis operation in town, uh, that makes like grows and makes CBD oil type stuff. Um, and they have a farm. And awesome. we're gonna um, sort of have a party out there, um, and it's nicely situated, kind of in between Asheville and Waynesville, so it's convenient for everybody. Okay, so I've been talking with um, you know different people on the team, and now we all kind of just want to go to Asheville's a bit. I mean, like the whole week. So even when I used to, you know, and I think I told you when we first started doing Freelance Business Week, it was each organizer pick their week during the during the year we didn't all do it you know the same week oh, mm -hmm. and what i liked about that was that i could go to them uh -huh. you know, even if i didn't go all week i could at least go for a day or two and i gotta tell you about the lineup like that i'm not sure which days i would go i, I would want to stay the entire time so man you've done it an amazing job so if you haven't got your ticket yet go to freelancebusinessweek.com go to the cities Look up Asheville and look at look at what all they have going on. Grab your ticket. If you're not in Asheville, I, are you guys having any virtual stuff? You're doing everything in person, aren't you? Everything is in person. It was already complicated enough with all yeah. the <laughs> sessions we're doing. I didn't want to try and add that tech layer in. So we're not planning on streaming anything. Okay. Well, if you're not in Asheville, um, I would plan to try to be there next year, probably <laughs> just go ahead. Maybe the third week of April, just decide you're going to be in Asheville. Otherwise there is a national virtual event, um, same URL, freelancebusinessweek.com. So if that's something you want to take advantage of, we're having an entire five days worth of our own um, virtual programming during, um, I think most of it's from like 11 to 4, 11 to 4.30 cities are doing stuff in the mornings and the evenings. So it works out really quite well. I love seeing the local communities come together. So if you had one thing that could come out of your week, what would you love to see at the end of it? Oh man. Um, <laughs> you know, You're inspirational. You just made that come out of me. <laughs> it's, you know, it's really been all about um, trying to build communities. So um, you know, as part of this, we um, obviously put pulled together a team 
um, got a, a, which I should mention, um, we've got, um, I got four people who've been working with me, some amazing women in town who, um, uh, uh, Alyssa Phillips with Amp Designs, Samaya Owens with um, Present Mo Moment Media, Laura Lee Garns with WNC Social Media Buzz, and Leslie King with Leslie King and Power. And um, we are tr trying to use this to springboard building more community too. So we've started a Facebook group. What I'd love to see come out of this is, you know, a vibrant, connected freelancing community that supports each other, that we can help each other grow and continue to do uh, more events like this in the future. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I actually kind of miss it. The cities doing them um, during, you know, their own weeks throughout the year because it allowed us, you know, after this is over, you'll have the bandwidth to help, you know, a, a, some other community help their build theirs up, you know, and, and give them an extra voice. And we just had stuff kind of, I don't know what the right word is, but, you know, splattered across the year, if you will. Mm -hmm. And, but at the same time, we have this national holiday. That's the third week of April. So it's, I don't know, we'll have a little uh, powwow at the end of this and see if maybe we want to go back or if this is really still the way to, to keep going. Um, if you guys see this, if you have any feedback, put it in the comments on YouTube. I like to go out and read that kind of stuff as well. So why did you, I think I know the answer because you just talked a lot about community but one last question. So why did you decide to be an organizer for Freelance Business Week in Nashville? Um, you know, it's interesting. I just did a um, Facebook post about this. I was looking through my, um, you know, how Google like shows you your photos from last year, the year before and all that. Yeah. And uh, one came up was from four years ago. And I was just sort of graduating from Mountain BizWorks, which is like a small business education and SBA loan distributorship uh, here in, in the region. Uh, so I had gone through a class there, uh, their foundations and business class um, and four years ago. And as, as part of my business plan that I put together on that was that within five years, I wanted to organize a creative conference in the area. Oh, and wow. the original vision was that it would be like a design conference. Um, but you know, when I attended the virtual one la last year, I was like, Asheville ne could really use something like this. This would be a, a great addition to, you know, we have a lot of things that are sort of complementary, but nothing that really was like specifically for freelancers. And uh, so I decided, you know, this is this kind of fits that, um, checks that box on that list of goals. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, four years later, uh, within that five years I wanted to do it. Yep. So Got it right under the wire. <laughs> awesome. Well, we sure have benefited from having you on board. I mean, you're the creativity that we've, you know, gotten to share from you and just the inspiration, the team that you put together, you know, right off the bat, he went and, you know, I, I you probably already knew to do it, but one of the things I pushed out was like, get a team, get a team, get a team, because man's a lot of work by yourself. And I turn around and he's like, going, okay, I have my team, all my people. I was like, Oh my goodness. <laughs> and it was wonderful. So if you do want some more information about his team, um, go out to freelancebusinessweek.com. Again, go to Asheville and his team members are listed down there with their links, I do believe. Mm -hmm. And if not, you can also get out to you've created a page yourself as well. And that way you get to learn more about what's going on in Asheville. If you want to be a part of the team, you know, reach out to to this guy as well. Um, Don is amazing to, to work with. I guarantee that you will appreciate the time you get to spend with them sure well thanks and same to you i mean you brought a ton of organization to this and made it way uh easier and feasible than if you know i'd been trying to do something like this from scratch so mutual That's admiration club two members <laughs> right here <laughs> i love it and it's crazy to hear you say that because this year has been a little bit rocky with having to in the back end you know we had to you know make some pivots and stuff. And so yeah. I appreciate that, you know, we were able to handle that and it didn't rock everybody's world too, too awful much. And it really has set us up for, I think, even a much smoother next year. And I'm excited to see what other cities come on board. So if you're interested, again, go to freelancebusinessweek.com slash apply, and you can apply to put Freelance Business Week in your city next year and be a part of the community. So is there any last words of advice, inspiration that you would like to share with the, the viewers before we call it a conversation and um, collaboration mm -hmm. is always more 
powerful than competition and <sighs> love and curiosity is greater than fear. Yeah, I can't top that and I don't want to. So that is fantastic because that should leave us all with a little bit of something to think about. Again, thank you so much for joining us today, John. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys come back with and come away from your own, your first event out there in Nashville here in a few weeks. Awesome. Thank you so much.